What's going on boys and girls and welcome back to Nth Level Entertainment, the most awesome geek and car culture YouTube channel in South Africa. I am your host Zwille Tomashangu and today we're covering Superman and Lois episodes 1 and 2. Now for those of you who might not know, Superman and Lois is the newest DC Comics superhero television show to land on the CW. Um, the CW verse was started by shows like Arrow and then followed by The Flash and then Supergirl and then there was Legends of Tomorrow and Black Lightning and so on and so forth. So Superman and Lois is the newest show. Um, it features the Superman that was introduced on Supergirl played by Tyler Hoechlin and uh, basically it's now his own standalone series um, that a lot of fans have been asking for. So um, I'm pretty happy to announce this actually because I did check out the first two episodes um, the thing that I didn't like about, I was happy that, about the fact that there's a Superman on television, but I didn't like how he was handled because, and I understood as well that, um, they needed to keep Supergirl being the prominent, uh, Kryptonian in the CW verse because she had her own show. So he featured sort of like as a cameo and a backup kind of person. And as a result, um, they actually, you know, nerfed and toned down a lot of what Superman is in terms of his power and his prominence as the flagship DC character. So in this show, uh, that has been a lot different. I think they took advantage of the fact that there was a crisis on Infinite Earths, which as all comic book readers know that um, crossover events like that tend to reboot the DC landscape. So I think they're doing the same with the TV shows, or at least with that particular one, because its tone and everything is very, very different. Um, instead of having one child, as we saw at the end of Crisis, they now have two, they're twins. And in the show, that they've actually aged up, they're teenagers. And um, in the first episode, uh, we are basically reintroduced to the Superman character via the typical CW monologue at the beginning, uh, where he explains his origin and where he comes from. We see the whole montage of him being sent from Earth to Krypton, from Krypton, sorry, um, as, as it was being destroyed and being discovered by the Kents. And uh, he narrates this whole thing himself. And um, when he gets to the point where he's now in Metropolis as Superman, it's actually quite an awesome scene because we get to see an Easter egg that's never been seen on live action television before. We get to see the Flesher Superman suit. Now, those, those who don't know what that is, that is the first ever animated Superman series um, that was created by Warner Brothers. Um, I'm not sure what the artist's first name is, but he's, they, they, they always call it the Flesher cartoons. I think it's Matt Flesher. And um, we've never seen that particular costume in live action before. And we saw it, and it was very well done. It fit Tyler Hoechlin very well. Tyler Hoechlin himself plays the Superman role very well, to um, especially the Clark Kent side of things. Um, of course, the Henry Cavill Superman is always, will always be my favorite because of how he, uh, was tr he translated so well to live action. But... Um, his Clark Kent left much to be desired. You know, he he was missing some of those humble and bumbling aspects that made Clark Kent who he was. And Tyler Hoechlin plays them off very well. Um, on top of the fact that Superman is now a dad and we're delving into that, um, you know, part of things and uh, how he's balancing his work-life situation, being Superman and being a father. And then Lois, is, of course, because she's in the title, they have actually split up the action between Super Superman and Lois quite well. Um, in that we delve into her investigative journalist side of things, um, where she's uncovering truths here and there. She's got that, you know, famous uh, Lois Lane spunk, where she's always rubbing people up the wrong way uh, for, for the right reasons, of course, as a reporter. So it's a show that's quite well done. Um, at the end of the first episode, they introduce the, the antagonist, who I think will probably be the antagonist for the majority of the season. Um, a, a person known as Captain Luther. My suspicions are that he's a he's a Lex Luther from an alternate universe, uh, similar to how they did it in Crisis on Infinite Earths as well as Infinite Crisis, which I believe they are leading up to, uh, where on his Earth everything was inverse. The Justice League was evil, and the the villains were the heroes. The Justice League was called the Crime Syndicate. They were led by a Superman that's called Ultraman. And um, he was a hero in that universe, and he came over um, to to our main continuity Earth uh, universe because of the, the crisis that was happening. So uh, he comes over, and he seems to have a very personal gripe against Superman. And um, the show ends with basically them actually, you know, fighting and simultaneously discovering that one of the children actually has superpowers, 
which is also a very interesting part of the story because um, the one who has superpowers is the one who's been diagnosed with social anxiety. He's very rebellious. He's, a, he's one of those brooding teenagers. And um, I think he might end up being Superboy Prime if they're going to go the right of Infinite Crisis. And the other child, Jonathan Kent, he's more the all-rounder. He's well-liked. He's a jock. He's a star athlete. Um, they think he might have powers because of the fact that he's an athlete. But Jordan was the one to, who was discovered to be to have powers. But I think somewhere down the line, they're going to realize that he's also got powers. And he's going to be, quote-unquote, an anagram between Jonathan Kent from the comics, who's Superman's son, as well as Connor Kent, who was in Infinite Crisis, who ended up being killed by Superboy Prime. So it's interesting to see how they're going to go with that one down the line. And then uh, in episode two, they basically continue the story of how things went with them discovering that Jordan has powers. Uh, Jordan goes on a trip with his dad to the Fortress of Solitude uh, as both a bonding experience as well as a fact-finding mission. They talk to jor there, uh, who basically runs another test. And uh, he seems quite excited that the lineage of Krypton might actually continue. But then the test reveal that, um, you know, the Kryptonian side of his DNA that will actually produce powers seems to be of an insignificant level. So it's likely that whatever happened may not happen again. Um, but of course, I think that's a bit of a red herring. Just, you know, so there's, there's a twist somewhere down the line um for us to not already think he's gonna have powers so um and then it also there was also an awesome fight between superman and uh, captain luther it was very very man of steelish which is one of my favorite things about this show i was worried that they would mess it up you know because i'm a big time superman fan uh from dc comics but um it seems like because okay what i've heard is that hbo has actually partnered with cw on the production of this show in, in terms of like budget wise and and effects and all of that and it's almost like watching man of steel on television you know um there's a lot of callbacks to the dceu version of superman in terms of some of the the things that they have him do like you know the first person uh flying camera angle that he does when he's chasing captain luther around um they even mimicked the fight that superman had with zod after he attacked martha uh when he was dragging him through the cornfields and punching him at the same time they do something similar to that with uh, Superman fighting Captain Luther. So, and it looks very, very realistic. I mean, you can tell that it's not all the way a movie budget, but it's several levels above what we normally see on the CW. Which, uh, another one of the things that makes me worry about that is the fact that, uh, number one, are they gonna be able to carry it throughout the season? And number two, how are the other CW characters gonna feature in a way that makes sense on this show or Superman feature on their shows? Because there's going to be compromise in the level of, you know, um, the tone and the look and feel of how these characters are going to look. I mean, you know, Flash might, might cameo there and look like he's on a movie set and we'd see a movie version of the Barry Allen Flash we know from the TV show. But what's going to happen when Superman features on the Flash? You know, is it going to look CW-ish? Is it going to bring down how he looks from his own show? That's, that's my concern. I hope they find a way to, to balance the two. But I'm pretty excited about this show going forward. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be some sort of a rivalry that's now brewing between the boys. Um, Jonathan is still trying to be as brotherly as possible as he supports Jordan through this journey of transformation and discovering new stuff about himself. But um, they do seem to be playing it very ambiguously. There seems to be some seeds of jealousy that are being sown in Jonathan. It's going to be interesting to see down the line. But yeah, that's going to conclude my review of these first two episodes. I hope all of that made sense. I jumped around quite a bit in terms of the narrative. But let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the review or what you thought of the show, if you've watched it. And if you enjoyed this video, please click on the thumbs up icon and leave us a like. And if you'd like to see more, consider subscribing. And when you do, ring that bell icon so you are notified each and every time I drop new content on this here channel. As usual, I have been Zwerat Tumashamu. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I urge you to take care of each other, stay awesome, and stay chasing your dreams to infinity and beyond.